uh, Cloud9 automatic point of view on Train versus Face Clan. Uh, so Tim couldn't do much in that round, but one of the things that he did do when he's coming up the ladder He's not coming up and then like trying to like walk off of it normally He was trying to come up the ladder high enough where he could just press spacebar and just jump off the ladder where he'll get He'll get launched off almost So when you get launched off the ladder like that, it's a you're a harder target to hit So that's what he was doing trying to do there You didn't notice that. When he was running to ladder, it's important to note he was looking left at the wall. He wasn't looking toward the middle. And that's just so he can play anti-flash. If the terror starts flashing outside, he can still get close into ladder room and fight a player in ladder room without worrying about being blind at all. So that's just important to note, like the path that he took and why he was looking at the wall. Looks like C9 actually won that eco though, so Tim's got a rifle here. And we saw in the pistol round, even though I didn't mention it, he his goal was to get close to E-Box and hide, and then wait for his teammates to get contact, and then he would fight off of that. But in this round, it looks like he's going to be playing farther back with the M4, and let his teammates get up close with their UMPs. So immediately when he, Tim saw the smokes and flashes coming outside, he dropped off of the high ground. He didn't want to be exposed to too many angles, the angles that would be in T-Connector, the angles that ladder, but also he would get flash from any number of positions if he remained up there. So even though he might be able to get a, like a, a cool pick every now and then on a, on a player, um, the risk reward isn't there because you're putting yourself at a really big risk to maybe get a kill. And that's not really worth it in a lot of cases. So Tim dropping down immediately, make sure that he can control which angles he wants to peek, make sure he's not exposed to too many angles at once, but also protects him from getting flashed because uh, trains block a lot of the view of the flashes. It's, yeah. Oh, he's just farming on these guys. That's unlucky. I'm wondering if Tim wants to go for that op. Or if his teammate's gonna go for it. Oh, that's an M4, never mind. His teammate got out picked. So there's over a minute left in the round, and C9's at a two man disadvantage. So right now, Tim's thinking, I've used my utility, like my smoke's gone, my mollies are gone, like all I've got left is a nade and my gun. We're two men down, we have no info and there's over a minute left. He's feeling that if he doesn't make a play now or if he doesn't get info, then they're gonna lose the round. So even though pushing into mid, it's a huge risk, but you need to do that because if you find out that mid's clear, maybe you, that the enemies are all grouping up inner and then you can stack inner with three people and then you know have that three versus five at inner as opposed to one versus five so pushing up and playing for the info when you're two men down and you're out of utility makes sense even this early into the round because if tim's able to pick up a kill or maybe an important kill maybe gets 
um, an AWP or maybe he gets a bomb, then that's like a really impactful kill. So that's why he's pushing up in this situation. Take my phone off of. I, c I can't actually see anything on my phone. One sec. I gotta like edit this part out. Um. I forgot I put my phone on do not disturb, and if the pizza guy gets here and the concierge isn't downstairs to buzz him in he's gonna call me but I mean figure it out So the setup close up at middle, it seems really risky at like first look, but playing two riflers up close here, you're really able to like lock down these choke points and make the use of the choke points, like use that choke point against the enemy, funnel them in through this small area where we can just get straight bullets off of uh, the enemies and just kill everyone. So Tim and Nothing are playing this crossfire here, and Tim's just peeking in and out from this e-box area. And they have full nades, so either ladder or middle is going to be smoked out or mollied at any given time. So they only have to worry about enemies coming from like one location. And they're just like peeking in and out, and they'll play a crossfire, and they'll work the trades together while they have support from the back lanes from an offer. It'll be interesting to see later in the demo if we can find a round where he has to react from this position to an outside take with smokes and flashes and everything. So as soon as they got the kill, they decided we have the man advantage, there's less time on the clock and there's not much utility. They they fall back into these like deathmatch, um, safer deathmatch positions. They take take their turns like peeking everything. So this is a really good reaction by both Tim and nothing great um, angles being watched. Great uh, decision making on just falling back after that kill, and great use of like not recycling but um, just using the smokes to lock down the choke points like ladder. So Tim's coming towards back lane's ivy this round, and I don't know if this is a permanent position or if this is an anti-eco setup, but the way that he's positioned here allows him to like just see down the lanes, clear sight line, and, and get a lot of kills. So my assumption is they read that phase is going to be on an eco round, and they chose to have safe positions with Tim in the, in the back lanes there. He's safe against people that are coming out team and ladder. And at the same time, he's also helping his teammate who's got an op back lanes in case there's an ivy rush. So Tim would be responsible for locking that down, dropping a molly and spraying through them. So Tim this round is choosing to play aggressive and alone in a man advantage situation and if someone had gone like T-Connector there and just gone for the straight up aim battle with Tim, like <clears throat> it would benefit the terrorist more. If the terrorist is able to make it a 4 and 4, now the game's like a lot more winnable. But if the game's, if the round's 3 versus 4, like there's less of a, you know, a, a change in it. It's like... Three versus five, sorry, three versus five or four versus five. 
chances are you're probably going to lose the round if you're T-side trained. But if, if it's now a 4 on 4, chances of winning go way up. So this is their anti-eco setup again. When he deviates to push up into this angle here, I I don't know I don't know why he was doing like what he felt like he needed to control there. So getting into the cove. Uh, it's a pretty strong angle, you're probably going to get your kills, but he's also going farther away from his teammate who's at Ivy, um, who had the AWP, and also he was getting like really close quarters with the enemy where if he dies, his teammates can't get a tr trade, and then the enemy now has a gun. So I don't know if pushing into Cove there is like the greatest idea. Um, it worked out, and it'll probably work out in most cases. But it's it's not like the most necessary thing to do in a five versus three. So they're just chain smoking ladder. As soon as they're out of smokes, they fall back and they play for the retake. Um, reading this as a fake actually quite early. They heavy rotated inner, like, there's already three CTs inside inner before the terrorists even get to the lower ramp. So, that was a really big read. Tim hasn't actually played in this position yet. He's, he's played kind of in the position once, but every other time he's been playing close E box or the ladder e-box setup crossfire with, with Jordan. So playing this position is like the first time he's changed it up. I don't know if it was like it's a global like setup change because now they have someone upper inner. Uh, I don't know if like that's why he's playing up this close, but this is a, a very important position to just hang around and utilize your like flashes and just knowing where the enemies are gonna be because there's smokes all over the place. And just knowing where the enemies are on the other side of the smokes is really important here. So Tim got a little too excited there. Like this this play was completely unnecessary. Four versus two and the enemies got pistols. To try to like do a flash play through the smoke. When he was holding just like shit, how do I do it? Hello? Yeah. Okay, I hope I pressed the right button. My pizza's here, boys. My pizza's here. <sighs> Anyways, what I was saying was... Right here, when Tim was in this position, he had a great angle to kill anyone who was coming out of either angle here. Either someone's running through the smoke, or someone's going to be running on the right side where Skadoodle is right now. So this is a really good position for him to be in, in five versus two. No reason to pull out a flash and start trying to make hero Stewie 2k plays. Not much to say. He was playing close on the smoke where he'd be looking like towards the train. And what that does is if anyone's trying to walk or run through the smoke, Tim will actually see them run into him um, or they'll just like run past him. And the other situation that might happen is someone might throw a flashbang first and then uh, one of Tim's enemies might have tried to go through the smoke. 
and then Tim would have not been blind from the flash because he was looking at the wall. So there were two things that, with one stone, with how Tim was positioned there behind the train, behind the smoke, looking at the wall. Um, so if if you do find your, yourself outside instead of like looking into a smoke or something out of nature, where you just get you get blind, just think like, oh, you know what? These guys are gonna flash. Let's dodge the flash. Tim knows that these guys on on a gun round. So it's okay to look for like an opening pick. Like you don't need to be a, a hero and get into a ladder if they're on uh pistols. The smoke behind him, we saw this happen if you were watching the Mirage demo with Alu, that if you're if you push into a certain area as a CT and then have your teammate throw a smoke grenade behind you. The enemy might think, oh, they just smoked this out, like there's no enemy going to be here, and then they let their guard down and you can get a really free kill or multiple multiple kills. This wall Tim was hiding behind, it almost kept him alive long enough so that he could be unblind by that flash, but the pop flash is uh, something you definitely have to be listening out for. So when the f when you hear the the noise of a terrorist, you know, using one of their grenades, it'll make a an audio cue. Once you hear that, you need to anticipate that it's going to be one of those pop flashes and just face the wall instantly so you don't get blind. Granted, it's a lot harder if you have people talking on your voice programs and you can't hear it, or if there's gunshots masking the noise, or if you're on a sound blaster headset. So the entire round, Tim Tim already used his utility early in the round. So he's playing in a, like a really aggressive position. He hasn't like it doesn't matter if he dies. He doesn't have any more utility. I mean, it matters if he dies, but it doesn't matter as much. Like if he has utility, like smoke splashes and everything, then obviously he wants to get value out of that. So he doesn't want to waste that um, by dying without using it. So once he used it, playing in a close position like that is absolutely fine. Uh, he happened to just not be ready for the enemy. Didn't get the the kill, but. It's a good position to kind of like stay maneuverable around close middle and have support from your teammates who are back lanes and bomb train. Um, so the positioning there is is a pretty common one where he's just putting his face into the the blue train so that he can avoid flashes and wait for the terrorists to actually start coming through the choke points on their execute before he finally peeks them. So Tim is like a, I guess a hybrid. He's whipping up the op and, and doing it from uh, around six lanes too. The only rifler that they have, oh, never mind. They have two rifles outside and op, two ops outside. One of the rifles is holding Ivy while Tim's holding like front lanes. I think that's very, uh, I feel like Tim was like in a rifler mentality there, holding the op. Like, opting like a rifler. And not fully adjusted to it. So, maybe he should have been in the back lanes, or... or I don't know. Behind the train looking for angles, as opposed to, like... Post it up under an off angle. Four man Ivy Rush. So, it's important to know what he did there, where he jumped on the guardrail, and then jumped over. It's gonna make it for a very difficult shot for any of the... CTs to hit. So Tim can avoid getting shot in the head, which means he stays alive, but get valuable information, such as how many enemies there are, if they're on the left or the right side, um, and then just 
help create space so his teammates can get closer and then they can rush the CT together. So when Tim was running up this green train, you know, it's like he never looked to his right. He never, so where he's looking right now, he didn't even bother checking. He basically used that smoke as a wall. In his eyes, that smoke's a wall. Use it, put my back to it. There's nobody can come from there. That's the mentality that he had when he was clearing all the other angles and not even looking here. And once the smoke starts dissipating, that's when it's like, oh, wall's been demolished. So it's important to utilize smokes for cover in this regard and just like hug it as if it's a wall that no one can come through it because that's how you're gonna take like your safer angles. Was that the, the demo or what the fuck was that? Was that, were that, was that my eye? Like, did you guys see that? I don't know. So it looks like the terrorists are mainly playing for the info right now, or at least Tim is. Spotting for feet, not really taking like a super hard engage angle. Just kind of like figuring out where the enemy is so that he can uh, like properly engage once he knows where the enemy is as a team coordinated. Um, so he was playing like really cr like tight angles where he might not get the kill but he definitely gets the info to set him up for the kill. So this is the anti-eco setup from C9 where they're just gonna hold back for a little bit. I guess Stewie's gonna do a little bit of a scout towards inner and then they're gonna hit outside. So we made the fake inner, so it's time to go outside. Tim's job is to clear all the close angles. Um, and just doesn't. That. I mean, going up the ladder there doesn't really make sense if you know that you're against an eco. Like, you can you can go and just show your head and fall back down, but, like, he came up and wasn't expecting anyone there. As the first one out, you gotta be, like, expecting people everywhere, so you always gotta keep moving. Like, move up and down the ladder, side to step, side to step, and then just, like, like bait, bait steps out everywhere just to kind of find out where the enemies are, not just sit on the top of the ladder and, like, scoping over the top like your submarine or something. Um, it's, it's a tough, it's a, it's tough not to commit once, like, you see your teammate running through the smoke, it's tough not to commit and run out, but you gotta realize, like, you're most likely just running out to your death, so just chill the fuck out, uh, cause it didn't look like the terrorists threw any smokes that would do anything to help them get out of the ladder, so once, once Tim saw that Stu's dead, I would just say, ah, all right, no reason to fucking just suffer the same fate. If you guys want to learn a smoke for ebox, looks like that smoke was just used to bait out a reaction from the CTs so that there can be a late round just dry fight where 
you know, maybe there's like a couple of smokes down on the battlefield, but everyone's basically AKs versus whatever weapons the CTs have, and then just try to take those aim duels, which is a pretty smart tactic for a team that has a lot of gamers on it, such as C9. That's a great spray transfer. Um, I mean, not much more to say about that. Don't think many people here can can transfer it like that. I guess that's just like a glitch with the demo or something. So the bomb's planted for a ladder. He's gonna back off towards T mid and just instantly check his flank, and he's probably gonna get the kill on on this guy flanking. Just. Again, with the smoke. So the smoke, you can see it lands right by the E-Box and it's gonna give him a little bit of cover so he can get out. Uh, unfortunately, CS timing, like if he'd gone half a second earlier or later, he would have either seen or avoided rain. So that's just unlucky timing. Um, perhaps he could have been looking towards that angle for you know a little bit longer instead of like looking over to his left but that's not something that you're ever going to think about in the situation i think like you have a 50 50 chance of being right with just like aiming for some guy to walk out the e-box smoke or someone to come from sandwich side So he's just gonna go first round in Nico. He's probably just gonna get annihilated by an opera Z. So you can see he just like dropped down. He didn't even care about taking damage. And sometimes like that's just the play that you need to make. Like fuck a little bit of damage. I'm gonna get you know really deep in their ass where we can get the kill and get the bomb plant. About to do an outside smoke. So he's like wedging himself into this this wall thing. And this probably goes down deep ivy lane to block off anyone who's ivy six lane. Pretty useful uh, smoke to use. Helps you guys get outside. around down ladder they're gonna run out oh that blows the only thing I would have said is would I have smoked Z there or would I have smoked the right side bomb train there I think I would have gone for the right side of the bomb train as it would give me like a little bit more cover from more angles, but also help me like get a bomb plant in that smoke and maybe even be a ninja for the post plant. Uh, and it's important to note how Tim dropped the bomb. He he's going down first, so you don't want to carry the bomb as the entry fragger in case you want to abandon the strat and and fall back. So he passed the bomb to his teammate, but when he passed it, he made sure that the bomb would not land on the floor. It would go straight to the teammate and not make noise. Uh, if you pass it and it, you drop the bomb, there's an audio cue, and the enemies, if they were close enough, they could hear that and then use that information against you. Here, I don't, I don't know why Tim didn't expect an enemy to be there. If he was going to push up that aggressive, for whatever reason, you gotta like commit to it. Just like sit on the other side of the smoke with a, you know, with your gun out, something like that. You can't just like turn your back and start trying to get into an, an, another or better position or something like that. So it looks like this is just a default and Tim's just gonna sit here for a little bit. One, for info, he can hear if the enemies are playing close e-box, sandwich, things like that. Uh, two, just map control, control this connector bit. He's not gonna challenge anyone, he's gonna allow his teammates to get in good positions, ready to come out ladder, ready to come out ivy before he does anything. 
Um, so his job is just to maintain control here and not to try to fight anyone. And in this position, you can hear if they're E blocks, if they're like close in the ladder room, get that information to his teammates, and then they can, you know, the strat color can make a decision based off of that and the other information on the round. So, pretty much the entire round, he's just sitting here. Uh, keep keep in mind where his like shoulder is the entire time, and he's pretty much always got a shoulder connected to one of these bomb trains, or sorry, one of these uh, outside trains. His shoulder is always connected to one, like a magnet almost. He never drifts too far away from it, and that's just like keeping. Uh, it's just knowing how the angles work in in the game and in real life, in terms of seeing the enemy at. at first. You always want to create that distance. Unlucky peak. Looks like a fast outside take. fucking shit and fire all over the place. Just getting up close and making sure this bomb train's cleared and he's going so at the same time that he's going in, his teammates are going from like over the other sides of the bomb train. So he's always so even though he's just running seemingly like a jackass, just holding W the entire way, he's actually creating like you know tri pronged aggression on, on the CT. Where his teammates are going at the same time as well. So even if he dies um, his teammate can get the trade, and vice versa. Again, his job just to hold control, listen, get info. He's a man up, so there's no reason to go for a pick. He's just going to keep maintaining control. Very boring job, but Someone's got to do it. Looks like his teammates are getting ready. Five on three already. His teammate did a, a B fake and then they just came outside with it. So nothing to really talk about. Getting into heaven for a good post plan position. Gets a kill, changes his angle immediately. I'm boring. Getting fucked. Sometimes that's what happens when you execute against like a max economy CT team. You just run into shit. Just start eating shit from the moment you step out of that checkpoint. So I'll show you this, this lineup when he lines it up. So right now he's standing in the position he needs to be when he uses the smoke, but he's also got his gun out, so he's anticipating uh, an enemy to push him. So he's ready for an enemy to push him, and then once his strat caller says, "All right, smoke now," it takes he doesn't have to look at his feet. He can just look up at the the position he needs to line it up with. So smoke time. Let's follow where that went. It's an easy left side bomb train smoke. So they use the smokes, and instead of doing anything right out right away, the teams are sitting back and letting the CTs use everything. So the CTs just have flashes now because they use their mollies, use the smokes, use everything, and now the terrorists can come out at the tail end of the smoke and get the bomb planes. Dude. I have a crazy theory, but I can't say it right now.
that concludes the demo review right now. I have to, I have to 